Hi, Dev Cherry, the coders calling you. This video discusses Task Manager I.O. A library that provides simple queuing, scheduling, and event-based programming for more or less every Arduino and even embed devices. First, we're going to discuss what Task Manager is and how you can add tasks to be executed. Then we're going to discuss how you will integrate it, then events, we'll build a practical application, and then we'll discuss advanced features such as integrating with low power libraries and running second task managers um, on another core for larger machines. So before we go any further, let's look at what we wish to replace. This is probably the ubiquitous Arduino program that you see just about everywhere. It's the Blink, the equivalent of Hello World to a desktop application. Now we can see here that this delay function um, is, is called in the loop. What that basically means is that nothing else can happen while that delay runs. So this is fine as long as the only thing you want to do is blink one LED every once a second. If you want to do more than that, then the code gets very messy very quickly. And that's where Task Manager I.O. comes in, and we're going to discuss how to use it now. So we have followed the steps in the previous slide. We can see here we've included Task Manager I.O. and that we've added the run loop as suggested. So the only thing we have left to do now is actually schedule something to be done. So we just say Task Manager schedule and then we can say, let's say we want to repeat something in seconds. We can also just want to run something once, but we want to repeat in seconds one, and we want to um, schedule some work to be done. And what we want to do is we, we're going to recreate Blink. So we'll say pin mode LED built in, comma output, and then here we'll digital write, LED built in and we'll do LED state. Right, so now that leaves us needing to define LED state, so we'll do that here. And then underneath this. And that's the equivalent of blink written using tasks. Let's build that. So Shift F10 in C Lion will run the build, the Arduino build. So when we want work to be scheduled, there are several ways we can do it. We can either use the repeat methods or the once methods. And we can also execute, which is like a queue. You're treating task manager like a queue when you do that. That just executes straight away. And you can also cancel tasks. So we can see here that I've added an extra schedule um, uh, just below the original one. And what I've done this time, just to show how to do it with a function, I've actually scheduled a function to execute. So what does this actually do? So what happens is when we call task manager schedule, it takes the schedule that we provide to it and it takes this function reference, in this case, it's a direct function reference, and it puts it in a queue to execute later, ordered by time. And the run loop runs everything ordered by time. So it tries to take the thing off the front of the queue and run it, but it will only run it if its schedule has, has or not just its schedule, but if it's triggered, basically, because some things don't have a schedule, but things that are timing based have a schedule and they will run once they reach that schedule. If they're repeating, they go back on the schedule queue again, basically. They put themselves back into the queue at the right place after they've run. Lastly, on the scheduling front, I'd just like to copy one more case, which is that you can schedule any class that extends executable. So if we look at executable, it has a virtual function that you need to implement called exec. And that will get called when the schedule is due. 
this allows you to store state. So it's the easiest way to store state with TC with with Task Manager. And we can see here I've just slightly adjusted the um, the link application that we wrote before to work with with this executable class instead. And you can see here um, you can schedule and you can provide a pointer to an executable which is what we've done here. And we've just moved the LED state into the executable class. This way, if we wanted to create a second one, it would be much easier. So our requirements for Superblink have come in. And um, fortunately, we've been heading in the right direction by using the executable class for scheduling. So let's just look at our requirements. So we will start by ignoring the emergency and come to that in the second pass. So blink LED built in every one second and blink LED to every half second. So the first thing we probably want to do is to store the pin to blink inside this class. So now we'll create a constructor and we'll make it take a pin and we'll say that pin num is assigned pin during construction. So now we change pin here to pin num and that's it. That is all that we need to do to that class. So now we create a blinky and we'll call this one LED built in and we'll set it to LED built in and we'll create another blinky underneath and we'll set that to LED2 blinky and we'll just call it LED2 LED LED2 just to have a slightly better name and we'll set that to LED2 and now we'll define LED2 as pin 9 and then in here we just need to schedule them both so we do LED built in and create another one and do LED 2 and that is it we've converted blinky and we should actually whenever we have a whenever we have a single argument constructor we should always make it explicit and it doesn't like that we've got a typo in the word and that's it. By that simple few changes, we've created two. And if we had to create, ah, one thing missing, LED2 has to repeat in milliseconds 500, because it runs every half a second instead. But that is it. That's all we've had to do to implement two. If we had to implement 10, I'm sure you could imagine how we'd do 10. Let's build it and get it onto the board. Actually, in that last pass, we missed one step. I've just added that now. We didn't set the pin mode of LED2 to output. Once that was done, it's all compiled and working on the board. So event-based programming works different to scheduling. With event-based programming, we're waiting for something to happen. And once it happens, it's considered triggered. And then we run the task. So I've made a couple of small changes in advance of this sketch, just to save time. I've set the emergency pin, which we're going to have as pin two, and I've defined a function on Blinky, which lets us declare an emergency. And it just sets a Boolean. And once that, while that Boolean is true, the digital write is overridden and will always be high, which is our second requirement that we didn't implement before. So let's go ahead now and let's create an event. So we're going to create an event and we're going to call it emergency event. And it's going to extend from base event because all events have to extend from base event. And we have to implement functions for this to work. And we'll first concentrate on time of next check. So time of next check, if you remember from the last page, 
task manager calls this first to see if there's any need to trigger the event at the moment, basically. And whatever value this returns is how long task manager will wait before calling time of next check again. So what we want to do is we want to say if digital read and we'll say um, emergency pin, then we'll set triggered to true because at that point the event is triggered. And then we want to return when we want to come back again and call time of next check. So let's say that we're happy with a thousand milliseconds in between each check. Now in exec, so exec will only ever be called when it is triggered. So it'll be called once when it's triggered and then the event will become untriggered and it would need to be triggered again for exec to be called. So let's go ahead and set LED built in to uh, emergency being true for now. We'll just assume that once once it's set, it's always set. Or maybe we can even go a step further than that and we can set it to the value of the emergency pin because then it works for all cases eventually. And we can just say here, bool on equals, and we can say on, yeah. There we go, and this one becomes LED too. And this has made the exec function prepared ready for um, a, a later stage. But for the moment, it will always just set the emergency on. And we haven't yet used this. We haven't created an emergency event. So let's create one now. And then we just come down to set up and we register the emergency event. So we missed a trick with the last one really because when, when we look at event processing, the best way to do event processing is not to poll at all. So we could have an interrupt that triggers the event. And that's what we're going to do now. If we look over to the right, we can see that we have this second thread of interrupt and it triggers the flag on the event and it notifies task manager that the event needs to be serviced. So let's take a look at how to implement that now on our emergency event. So we're now going to go ahead and change the event to be interrupt based. So before anything else, we have to declare the emergency pin as input. And we're gonna use input pull up because it makes life a bit easier. And because of that, we're going to invert the logic here because it, may, it will be inverted because it will be always on until it's pulled low. That's very common in uh, embedded programming. And now we're going to attach an interrupt of type change to um, our emergency pin. We picked an interrupt capable pin for an UNO, so we're good there. And the only thing we're going to do there is mark the event triggered and notified. What happens when we do that is it tells task manager that event is now triggered and task manager will later call exec at a time when it's safe to do so, when it's not in the middle of an ISR, basically. Never ever do anything more than mark flags in an interrupt service routine. And as a result of this, we can make the time of next check just simply return a very large number because we don't want to do anything in there anymore. It, it's, it's just, in case, I mean, it, it is. It in fact has very little purpose once you use interrupt. And then finally, we're going to register the event with, with Task Manager. And that's it. We've added an interrupt event to Task Manager. So one last small change was needed, and that was to change um, the attach interrupt to call digital pin to interrupt. So at this point, we're going to discuss advanced topics. So the first one is low power. If you want to use low, lower power on the board, the easiest way to do that is to make sure you have mainly event-driven tasks. 
and if you have mainly event driven tasks then you can go into a low power state in between each run loop call because you can find out from task manager how many microseconds there are to the next task. So you can start a second task manager on another thread or core. You simply create a global task manager object like task manager 2 for example and in the loop or thread procedure for that second thread you just while the thread is still running you call the run loop on task manager 2. Just bear in mind that you mustn't mix tasks up between two task managers and secondly um, you know it will make low power much much more difficult. So following on from the last slide be very aware that any data that is shared between two threads or two cores needs to have some kind of protection around it either compare and set or some kind of memory mutex that guarantees that both processes see the same memory. Any failure of that will result in problems. Task Manager internally uses CAS, a compare and store, to make sure that when you add a task, even if you add it from outside of a task, i.e. from another core, it will still be safely added to the task manager that you put it onto, but you must never use the same task in more than one task manager. And finally, thanks a lot for watching this video. Please do subscribe and please also look at the GitHub page and do consider sponsoring us. Creating these videos and keeping all our libraries current does cost money and time. Thanks again and goodbye.